Hi there, welcome back. Okay, let's get this menu sorted out and see if we can swap it out for this drop down menu uh, in appropriate circumstances. This is actually an extremely easy technique. Um, the gist of it is that there are two menus. There's uh, an unordered list, which we can see here. Um, that's visible at the moment. Uh, but there's also a uh, select drop down, which is also present, but uh, through CSS is hidden uh, until we use our media queries to reveal it at certain screen sizes. And obviously at the same time, we're hiding uh, our UL our main uh, primary navigation, the original one we worked on. So really, do, we're just using CSS to reveal one or the other, depending on the uh, depending on the circumstances. So that's the idea. Uh, so obviously, we could just go away now and make an identical copy of our menu, uh, but in the form of uh, a select drop down menu. But that's not ideal because that means you're maintaining two menus uh, at least at the same time, and that's a little bit impractical and a bit. Uh, a bit resource heavy so that's not what we're going to go for we're instead going to use jQuery to um, it's going to it's going to create a select and then it's going to populate it with links which it gets pulled from our existing menu here so we don't actually have to maintain this secondary menu it's going to be created for us um, all through the magic of jQuery this isn't my idea I should just point out this was I think I believe first seen on the on the five simple steps website and then I found it uh, cropping up on Chris Coy's website where he explained um, how you can basically achieve this so I'll give you the link to those articles at the bottom uh, of the tutorial but we'll go over more or less how it works right now so the first thing we need to do is ditch this and we'll go into Coda uh, where we have our existing menu this is it and what we need to do is create ourselves a secondary menu in here based on the values within our links. So we go down to the bottom of our document and you can see that uh, the skeleton boilerplate provides us with a nice little area where we're going to stick our uh, all our various jQuery bits and bobs um, at the bottom of the page of course to help with page loading speeds. So uh, I'm going to put a script tag in here and we're going to give it uh, a type of text and JavaScript. Okay, this is where we're going to put our document ready method. Uh, like so. Okay, now all our little scripts to do with this menu is going to go in here. So I'm just going to put a little uh, little notice telling us uh, what's going on there. Uh, I'm going to use uh, Chris Coyer's little drop down select. Okay, so we know what's going on. Now the first thing that needs to be done is we need to actually build our 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 drop down. So we're going to build the drop down and then we're going to inject it into our document so the first thing we need to do is state that we're going to build a little select element and then we're going to use the append to and we're going to stick it in our navigation nav that's the element where we want it to go that is our uh, the band that we call our navigation, and we want that to go in the nav. Okay. Uh, actually, where did we want that to go? I think there's an additional. Yeah, there's a div in there as well, so we may as well stick it in that div. So we'll put that in there. Now, if I save that, and we go back to Chrome and look at our menu, there it is, and you can see that we've uh, injected this little drop down in here. Uh, so that's lovely. So the first thing that we can do um, is uh, is hide it because we don't need it to exist at the same time as this. So we'll now go into our CSS and let's have a look here. Here's our navigation section. So the first thing we're going to need to do 
here is target that particular little select. What am I doing? There we go. And we want it to have a default display of none, purely and simply. We don't need to worry about that being hidden from other devices or text readers because uh, it needs to be hidden. We already have the, men the menu, the navigation. We certainly don't need things to be cropping up uh, coming across two copies of the of the navigation. That would be silly. Okay, so that's gone. Now what we need to do is make sure that at the right uh, screen size it switches out for that particular uh, thing. So if we go down to the media queries which are provided for us uh, in the default uh, layout CSS, you can see that these reflect the structure of the, the document already. Uh, you've got a larger sizes and they come they work down uh, minim, minimum and maximum width to uh, to create specific boundaries uh, for various devices your screen is always going to fit into one of these particular um, devices so uh, we're going to touch upon the the mobile devices here and we're going to add some rules to this media query and we'll make a copy of that is what we just declared and we're now going to state that with a screens of a maximum width of 767 pixels uh, which covers all mobile devices we want our select to suddenly display as a block and to complement that we also want our ul to disappear So we go back to Chrome, and uh, with any luck, when we shift down, you can see that our other menu disappears, leaving our um, leaving our little select there uh, in its place. So we can do a styling it a little bit, um, which we will do. Uh, we can do wherever really. We can do it. Uh, we can do it here, or we could do it to begin with. We may as well. Uh, well we may as well do it where we first declare it, as it's a main style. So even though we're saying display none, we want it to have a width of 100%. And I could do with. Let's see what have we got here. We've got some margin on the bottom, of course, which comes from the padding within the. That comes from within the band, does it? Let's see. No. That comes from that comes from this div, of course, which has where am I looking? No padding. Seems to have something. I oh, know it's be the select itself, won't it? Because of course we're working with. Um, the boilerplate styles. So the select itself, let's see, it has, it must have some margin somewhere. What am I looking at here? Margin of zero, margin bottom 20 pixels. Okay, there it is. So let's um, let's overwrite the, the margin on our select. Um, it doesn't really matter too much what we use here, so we may as well just stick with our seven pixel rule and treat it like so. We can also give it a height just to make sure that it also uh, plays ball with our baseline. So let's give it a height of 14 pixels. See how that looks. Mm, could be bigger. So let's just wipe that up. Okay, it's a bit chubbier. One more. Because of course, on mobile screens, you want things to be as uh, as visible as possible. Uh, okay, so that works. That's that's a good start. Um, of course, it doesn't have any actual content in it at the moment. So now it's time to go back to our, uh, our to our JavaScript and to uh, figure out how we can actually uh, fill this puppy up. So I'm just going to copy and paste things taken from Chris Coy's example here. Uh, Firstly, this little snippet is going to give us a single option at the top. We are 
building an option um, is it an element not really I suppose it possibly is okay well, we're building an option anyway and uh, we're going to define some of its attributes here making sure that it's selected it has no value uh, but we're giving it a bit of text as well and then we're going to append it to our select within our nav so I save that and you can see that we at least have one option within our select there now it's a question of populating it with the with the other items in our menu so we'll add another little snippet there like so and you can see what this is doing is it's taking the the anchors all the anchors within our navigation a band within the nav uh, and the list items so it's taking every single anchor within our primary navigation and using the each function it's looping through them and similarly to the uh, the first option we've created there it's now adding an option and appending it to our navigation select so I save that and you'll see that what it's done is taken each and every link uh, and it's just created an option with our select drop down there um, so that's good it works um, what it doesn't cater for unfortunately is our sub menu it's not very clear hierarchy it looks as though these are all just as important as each other whereas actually the four menu items underneath entertainment are of course the sub menu items so what we could really do with is putting a little dash in front of those so we're going to do this in the markup we're going to go back to our primary navigation and what we're going to do is add a little dash in front of each sub menu item going back to chrome you'll see that this is now much clearer we can see exactly what we're talking about these are clearly sub menu items of the entertainment uh, but of course that's had an impact on our actual sub menu and this isn't ideal we don't particularly want those you can have them if you want but I don't particularly like them so now we need to find a way of actually hiding them so I'm going to get rid of them by simply applying wrapping each one in a span element getting rid of any spacing as well so each one of those hyphens is now within a span and within our CSS I can quite easily go into the submenu section here uh, let's see I'm just going to stick it in here targeting those and giving those a display of none so that means that they're not displayed you can't see them uh, but of course they are in the markup so that when our drop down is populated it's still built using these little dashes here uh, which is extremely useful that's just a little extra presentational helping hand to keep the usability nice and uh, optimized uh, so one last thing uh, it doesn't actually do anything yet of course these uh, these all are all click clickable you can select them which is great but what we really want them to do is to uh, is to actually navigate to pages in, in our website so the final thing we need to do is just make sure that each of these links does something and we do that by targeting the nav select and making sure that on the on the change event uh, we uh, we kick in this function here which will take the value of the uh, of each option and uh, redirect you to that particular page so save that uh, obviously our links don't actually do anything so this won't really do anything other than reload the page but you can see that uh, that our menu is working extremely well there so uh, that's a job job well done we've uh, we've tackled quite an awkward part of the um, of the layout but it's uh, worked extremely well we've covered an awful lot of theory in doing so and um, uh, our responsive web design is coming along very nicely okay uh, I hope you enjoy getting up to speed with that and uh, building the source files uh, to the same stage that we're at here and uh, I will see you in the next video